It is clear that the unequal economy we live in and the market failures we suffer are a product of the capitalism being practiced today. A definition of capitalism states that it is the economic system in which a country's trade, industry, and profits are controlled by profit-driven private companies instead of by the people whose time and labor powers those companies to success. This misalignment of management power leads us to revise the purpose of an economic system which has become harmfully profit-seeking and allocatively inefficient, and return to an aim of bringing prosperity to those who provide their efforts and serve this economic system. This is the economy in which we will want to participate in, but to do so, I believe we have a duty to call for a form of the injustices capitalism condones. Let me give you a quick history lesson on the story of capitalism. The, ca the emergence of the capitalist system originates in the 16th century, when the aftermath of the Black Death led to the demise of feudalism. By the end of the 18th century, the dawn of the Industrial Revolution facilitated this modern idea of capitalism, which began to flourish as mass production and large-scale manufacturing began to overtake the job sector. During this period, Influential economist Adam Smith introduced the invisible hand theory, which suggested that actions undertaken by self-interested individuals in the market would lead to greater social benefits and greater public good. According to Smith, when, people are, when customers are freely able to decide what they want to buy, consumers are le cus sorry, businesses are left to freely decide what they want to sell. The, the self-interest of both then leads to decisions which result in good prices and the right products in the marketplace. This creates predictability, such as supply and demand, and is the reason you would find eggs and milk for sale when you go to the supermarket. So, this concept set the foundation for the capitalist economic system to pervade nations with the aim of achieving economic prosperity, profitability, and stability. More recently, however, individuals have grown increasingly disillusioned with capitalism, seeing the part it has played in posing the existential threat of the climate crisis on their collective future, exacerbating income inequality, and the growing instability of employment, with the emergence of the gig economy and zero-hour contracts. Nevertheless, capitalism has produced the ambition for innovation, with high competition driving the creation of goods and services which have huge social benefits to all. Capitalism also takes the position that greed is good. Greed drives profits, and profits drive innovation, investment, and product development. However, this is unlikely to be the case, with the shareholder interest which dominates modern capitalism, meaning that any social benefit is likely to be neglected. In addition, the benefits of capitalism are rarely equitably distributed, as shareholders aren't very good at sharing wealth. You may have heard of the term corporate fat cat which illustrates the greed executives have, who many believe earn unreasonably high wages and salaries. Thus, it is evident that capitalism drives socio and economic inequality, creating large social divisions which have harmfully impacted the collective progress of all and have pushed many under the poverty line. This leads us to challenge the long-held assumptions about the benefits of how our economy functions, and we reach a view that capitalism must be reformed to protect the interests of those who provide their time and efforts and serve this economic system. As these individuals' interests have been long neglected, while the 1% continue to grow their wealth. Is it right that the current economic system encourages the view that the more capital one accumulates, the more power they have, while there is a lack of equal opportunity to accrue this wealth? So, I hope it is now clear how current capitalism has fostered an unequal economy. However, reform can be achieved through innovative models of governance and endorsement of a purpose-driven financial sphere, aiming to reform the way value is created. Shifting to generate stakeholder value is a form of capitalism in which a firm focuses on meeting the needs of all its stakeholders. These are the customers, employees, suppliers, and the community in which it resides, not just the shareholders. These are, individual, these are the individuals who are directly or indirectly affected by, businesses made, by actions made by businesses. That means all of us. Our interests can have greater significance to business decision making so that you and I have more of a role in shaping our economy. This acknowledges that for an institution to 
experience genuine and long-term prosperity, it must balance the interests of all its stakeholders. Unfortunately, firms focus on short-term quarterly returns, neglecting the consequences that worsen the prospect of sustainable growth while compromising the climate and socioeconomic equality as they operate in this way. As defined by Ecolab, stakeholder capitalism puts people, planet, and prosperity at the heart of corporate purpose and profit. And this is the way that long-term inclusive growth can be achieved, and thereby real progress for all. So, it is seen to be endorsed by CEOs of the largest corporations. However, in practice, it is lacking and needs to be rejuvenated. For example, by creating a safe and healthy workplace beyond the minimum will not only reduce workers' compensation payments in the long run, but may also create more subtle benefits, such as greater employee security, well-being, and loyalty. Furthermore, capitalism is not only an economic system, but one of governance. So reforming capitalism entails remodeling the role of government in society. An existing view prevails that the role of government is to remedy market failures and simply regulate. However, as the most influential actor in changing how economic institutions run themselves, the government has a much larger role to incentivize corporate social responsibility and to reward purpose-driven outcomes that contribute to common good. Thus, this is because the market is largely an outcome of the governance in which it operates. So the use of government instruments, tax regulations, subsidies, policy and investment can determine the direction of the economy and thereby guide a more public value oriented economy. So far, this flawed ideology of capitalism has benefited the few at the top. However, changing governance structures from within will reform the way the market economy works and who it works for, as those with economic power have a moral duty to not exploit the labor that drives their affluence and success. So a remodeling to the economy encourages purpose-driven collaboration amongst all sectors in society so that we can tackle the key challenges in healthcare, climate, and the cost of living crisis experienced today. I hope I have now opened your eyes onto how we can reform some of the challenges we have faced in our economy. And you can take a moment to think about working towards a prospective future characterized by a more fair, inclusive, and dynamic capitalist economy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.